There we go. Yay! What's up, guys? Ah! Pens falling out you, of I was hair. like, why are you yelling? It, 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 it's starting. It's starting. Oh, my gosh. I barely did anything. I know, that right? well. <laughs> Hey everybody! What's up guys? I am so excited for this stream because the wonderful people from Worthing and Moncrief, and I hope to God I'm pronouncing that correctly, I feel like I screw it up every time, are here with us to review their newest game, and I'm going to screw up the name of the game too, HRO Adventures of a Humanoid Resource Officer. Yay! Did What's you get up, it? Guys? Did you get it? My clothes? She did. That was perfect. Thank you. Yay! Well done, Melissa. One hundred percent. Woohoo! Yay. Oh my gosh, thank you guys so much. I know you guys have been working on this game for quite some time. I'm curious because you've gone from Clue to Jane Austen to outer space managing people. <laughs> I love it. Like to the point I've almost forgotten what working in an office is like and I feel like I'm about ready to get bounced back into it. So what inspired this game? Mark, do you want to do you want to start off? <laughs> oh god. So so this game is like um is all the things we love, right? Like I grew up on all the reruns of those terrible sci-fi shows from the, <laughs> from the 60s and 70s. Um, and uh, Eric grew up with uh, that sort of whole tradition of the visual novel thing. And so in a lot of ways, this is our kind of Frankenstein monster of all the things that we love. Oh, that is yeah. awesome. <laughs> and also a way to make fun of, you know, the bureaucracy. But it's also a really, uh, we also talk a lot about wanting to do a space opera from a worm's eye view. Interesting. That's clever. And the idea yes. That yes, I want it, please. This, <laughs> and that even the smallest, uh, you know, cog in the wheel can be a hero. Yes, and Aww. human resources will be that cog. Yes, I'll... exactly. Yeah, yeah. Although yeah, I think they have too much that. power. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Truth be told. Snark Uber Rye. Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm so glad you guys can join us. If you guys have not had a chance to meet them, this is Eric and Mark. They are from Worthing and Moncrief. I think you guys have seen them every now and again in chat. These wonderful gentlemen have been working hard on this game and they're on the East Coast. So it's a little difficult sometimes <laughs> for them to, you know, try to um and join a bunch of stuff, but I'm always so grateful when they do because they are just the sweetest guys I have ever met. They are like the first developer I ever got the chance to meet. Weirdly yeah. enough, when we played um, <laughs> Matter of Murder, and <laughs> oh, I to this day, I still feel bad because it was, I was doing New Game Wednesdays. I saw this game, I'm like, oh my god, this is just so me. And I started hitting record, and I'm like, okay, cool, we're going to check out this game. And it says, you know, let's start you on the tutorial. And I'm like, fuck your tutorial, no. <laughs> Threw it out. And apparently, Aww. Eric was watching the, the video, and he's like, no! <laughs> Typical gamer. Typical gamer. Like, reading? What's that crap? We don't read. <laughs> Unfortunately, had I actually played the tutorial, I wouldn't have died nearly as much. Wah, wah. <laughs> wah, wah. No. And then you sit there and you rage about, like, I can't figure this out! And mm -hmm. Eric's just like, RTFM. <laughs> no, the truth is, actually, she did beautifully. Oh, Aww. thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you for the donation, Royal Clasher. Thank you! <laughs> so if you guys are excited to check this out the link to the game is down below is it a officially launched yet or is it still kind of in the works so it's still definitely in the works we uh, oh. our launch date is set for early december actually oh wow, oh, wow. Oh, so we're getting pretty early access well thank you <laughs> yeah this is just in relation to steam next fest actually they're doing making lots of demos available and we are included in that oh yeah i heard and... about that that and is so, so, cool. so uh, we're hoping so to get some... you're... sorry. So hope we're hoping to get some feedback on the experience actually, hey. uh, and because we still have like a whole summer's worth of uh, development to do. Uh, and other things to know actually is that some of the assets are not complete. Uh, you're going to see, uh, you're going to hear a lot of interesting voiceover tonight. Uh, the actors haven't been cast yet. This is all temporary <laughs> voiceover. Wow, oh. really? Oh, that's cool. Right, right. Yay! Hey, Russ. And what you'll be playing tonight is you'll be playing um, 
You'll be playing episode one uh -huh. um, of the of the season that we expect to release in December. So you'll only get sort of a taste of uh, of play. Oh wow! I am so excited. And really by the way, cool. if you guys have if you guys haven't checked it out yet, again, highly, 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 highly recommend Matter of Murder. Um, if for no nothing else, one, I'm just a huge Clue fan. Um, but it's. And I swear to God, they don't pay me to say this. I just you you can play it on your phone. It's great for like I just need five minutes to numb out from the world and just like pick up a game and play it. And it's it's just so fun, and I love it. And honestly, it's way underpriced for how good it is. <laughs> oh my god! Very kind. <laughs> but I'm curious, what got you guys into? Um, like creating games like were you guys did you guys start off as gamers or is this a, a passion project for you no so that that is actually a, a, a cute story i think it's a funny story actually mm -hmm. i um so we actually both started in the theater hmm. years ago we acted nice. together, uh professionally for years That's and awesome. i we, we've always, both of us have always been gamers, uh, but I just Yay. decided eventually that I was so interested in interactive entertainment that I decided to, you know, go and study it. And then I ended up working at Electronic Arts for a couple of years. Oh, wow. oh no kidding. Uh, and nice. when they closed our studio, I uh, came back to Boston and I said to Mark, I was like, hey, do you want to do you want to make games? And he said, absolutely not. <laughs> Crazy! <laughs> See what they do to developers. I mean, more or less, yeah. And then, so, but eventually, I wore him down, and a matter of murder was born. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> See, guys, there are good developers at EA. It's it's, it's not always the loot box. Uh, it's... <laughs> right. I had to throw that in there because EA did <laughs> gets crapped on a lot. <laughs> it's true. Sorry, that's also where our company's uh, weird company name comes from, because that was the last uh, show Eric and I did together. No uh, way. Was, um, important to be earnest. Yeah, and he was uh, he was Worthing and I was Moncrief. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, that's super cute. I love it. Isn't that's that? That's awesome. <laughs> so, of course, this is a question that everyone hates, but I have to ask every developer. So... Uh, gun to your head, you know, stuck on an island, you can only pick one game to play for the rest of your life. What would it be? Uh, <laughs> like, I don't want to answer this. Answer, and, and he doesn't, he doesn't like my answer, and I don't even like my answer, um, but I, uh, I love a Europa Universalis for which is <laughs> this like crazy complicated uh, grand strategy game, and I have thousands of hours in. It's, it's uh, <laughs> obsessive. That's fair. I don't necessarily hate that answer, especially if you love it. I think that's great. Uh, <laughs> no, he's just gonna hate it in private, not tell people, right? <laughs> uh -huh. For me. I, I mean, it's I am willing to admit it's mostly nostalgia, but I still uh, King's Quest Four really stays with me. Yes, that was the first King's Quest game I ever played. Oh man, <laughs> me too. I think actually. Right? Isn't it weird? You kind of start off in the middle, but you, you get the whole <laughs> context, and then you go back and play the original one before they remastered it the first time. You're like, I can't get yeah. these five squares to walk in the direction that I wanted to walk, and it wouldn't pause the game when you had to type. So I'm like, he's just gonna keep running right into that bear, but I have to type check inventory, and like, I'm... <sighs> Sierra made some much needed changes, but I think they went too far the opposite way, where they almost kind of took their audiences like, we're just gonna assume that they're dumb, and this is just all point and click. I mean, no offense, <laughs> Roberta Williams and Ken Williams some of the best people I've ever met, but I, 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 it, it lost a little something when it's just like, yeah, you're not going to type anything. Yeah, you're just going to point and click. I'm like, that's not where you started. <laughs> that's that's a, a common opinion I hear, especially mm -hmm. from people that played the parsers. Like, right? Yeah. There's something about like actually being able to come up with the idea of putting the things together that you can't do with the point and click. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's very true. Well, given that you guys are sages in the industry, what do you think is kind of missing right now 
from a lot of uh, the recent games. And I'm curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are on we're getting a bunch of games now that almost never leave beta or, hey, we're going to release one chapter and we're not going to tell you when any other chapter is being released. What's, what's your guys' thoughts on that? That's a really good question. Asking all the hard ones tonight. I know. I should have sent them the questions in advance because I'm like yeah. <laughs> putting them under the gun. <laughs> a little bit. And also send them a drink too. I, I should do it. that, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, that's tough. I, I mean, I am personally at any rate. I mean, like I'm I, I mean, I think transparency is actually very important. And I mm -hmm. think that, that would actually solve a lot of the problems that develop from that. Mm -hmm. But but there are sometimes good reasons that developers don't that like they delay a game for example oh yeah like sometimes there are really good reasons to keep a game in beta for a while as far as i, I personally i am actually very much against uh early access why is that because because if you put a game well in my personal opinion if you put a game in early access you get people that are interested in it early yes but if it's not quite where it needs to be yet they're going to lose interest and go find another game and they're not likely to come back to yours mm. once you fixed all the things that are wrong with it yeah it's like first impressions are the most important i mean i that was me and subnautica in the very beginning way back and now oh, i'm really? like would die for that game and everything it is because i love it <laughs> so much is crazy <laughs> but in the beginning it. i was just like all right i kind of looked around uh, and then it was actually chat that brought me back to it because people were like lisa's to play a horror game she should play subnautica i'm like that's not a horror game i mean it's, it's like not, minecraft like, into water kind of is, but yeah <laughs> i i definitely agree with you i mean that's evidence i think of everything you just said mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah that's uh, do you have any thoughts mark mm -hmm. oh, oh sure go ahead <laughs> Well, it's funny, funny you should say that because I think about early access and the reason I am not enamored of that whole idea is that uh, games like RimWorld, which have been in early mm. access for, what, five or six years? Right. Um, and they built and, you know, it's just endless early access. It seems to be a, a get out of dead jail free card kind of thing for some folks. So That's what I was uh, wondering. I yeah, because it seems like, well, as long as it's still early access, like, you can't come after us if there's bugs to be fixed. I'm like, well, right. yeah, okay, also QA your stuff before you launch it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think the the time I've seen, and I, I hate coming back to it because I know the stream is not about it, but I'll say one of the games, I won't name names, one of the games that did early access that I do think was nice was they had a built-in feedback feature. That's So smart. when you ran into bugs, you could ping them and be like, hey, this is not, you know, working well. And I assume they look at it, but, you know, it's still at that point, it's like, okay, I at least believe that when you're doing early access, you're it really is like a beta where you're trying to get user yes. feedback and... And whatnot. Yeah, and as long as you're clear with them, because I mean, like lots of gamers, they will absolutely sign up to QA a game because let me tell you, the ability to bitch and have other people care about it is such a superpower in this care day and age. It. If you're in software, I'm pretty <laughs> sure you get resilient to caring about it. Sorry, I'm saying it. I'm in software. <laughs> like, like, oh no, another ticket. They're so mad. All right, well, P5, we'll deal with this in like a month, yeah. maybe, if we feel like it. Cry, <laughs> users. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, it's just, you know, if you're going in there looking for stuff, and actually Lisa and I were talking about this, uh, what, I forget what game we were talking about, we said one of the challenges is that there's a bit of a separation between when the devs create a game and when the user plays a game. Because for the devs, like, they'll make connections as to what the next steps are and uh, they're very apparent for them because they know the whole phoenix context Wright. was it phoenix yeah. yes because i can never figure out the damn thing i'm supposed to do next to it. <laughs> <laughs> i'm fine i'm not better right so <laughs> to them it makes a lot of sense because they know the full context but to a user who's coming into it blind we don't know the context so we will just sit there i think the last couple of games of that we were really really stuck yeah. So when you guys are developing, do you kind of hand it off to someone like, look, I'm not going to tell you anything, just play it and, you know, like kind of just see where they go. Do you have anything to say, Mark? <laughs> well, we did, we did do it. We did, um, we did a round of sort of improv, informal uh, beta testing with a small group. It was like uh, 15 or 
20 people, I think, right? That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually it was a little uh, bigger than that. Sorry, I was expecting you to say that this is what I tell you all the time. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Eric is very good. Eric's very good about, like, don't have a, you know, don't influence the people who are playing and don't ask leading questions because I am all over the leading questions. And <laughs> I hear you, and you same. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, we, did a, we did do a session with a friend on Zoom over the winter. Oh. And he played uh, the scripts, just the, the story parts of all six episodes mm -hmm. that we are planning to release in December. And oh, I had the hardest time looking back at the recordings now. I am like, I am like leading him. I'm asking questions. <laughs> I'm pointing in places. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible. Uh, it's hard. It is because you're, you're so tied yeah. to it. And you're like, I'm not going to lead you here, but I need a very specific answer. <laughs> <laughs> we have a creed that, that we were taught in game design school, which I actually go back to over and over again, and that is that when the player tells you that something is wrong, they are almost always right. When the player wow. tells you what the what the how to fix it, they are almost always wrong. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's true. Uh, yeah, that's actually pretty accurate. I think to all the software. <laughs> Yeah, well, but uh, but yeah, no, we did. We started. In fact, we started. This game started differently. It was actually much more sandbox originally. Oh, okay. Uh, and it changed to a much more streamlined uh, user interface because players really didn't know exactly what they needed to do. Hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, your experience tonight will be better. But, <laughs> um, but the idea is that the choices that you make have a ripple effect in the story. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. What happens, not just in this, not just in the act, but what happens over the course of the episode. And then, for example, you won't get to play episode two because it's not in part of the demo. Mm -hmm. But the choices that you make in the first episode could lead you to a completely different episode two. So there's replayability factor built nice. in there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is so, so cool. So we will be interested in your feedback, and uh, and and if anybody else wants to uh, in chat wants to go download the game and play it, uh, there'll be a link to our Discord, which we've just started. Basically. Oh, great! And uh, please jump in and give us feedback. We want to hear your thoughts. Yeah. So that's awesome. That's so nice of you guys. Thank you. Yeah, I, thank you. Like it's just so cool. One last question before we get into the game, because I'm curious, because I, I gaming development I've always wanted to get into, uh, but I took one. Uh, coding class and I was ready to slip my wrist open because uh, oh 19 pages of code failed because a period was on page 9 and I didn't notice. Um, so I think all of your games are built on Unity. What do you, like, what's been your experience with building it? Like, how user friendly is it? And like, how do you think it stacks up against the other platforms? Wow. Uh, really should have provided him the questions before. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have an opinion uh, before I jump in, Mark? Or I, I'll let Eric um, answer this one. Okay. I love Unity, but mostly because Eric um, does all the hard stuff with it. Gotcha. <laughs> that's, that's all, Fair. That's all Eric's job. <laughs> I actually think Unity is very robust. Uh, it's very good for what we do. Mm -hmm. It's. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's not Unreal, which is like, we don't require the kind of processing power for the visuals, right? That Fair. Um, yeah. that Unreal provides. So on, uh, Unity, I think is terrific. And I think it's getting more and more approachable. They've just implemented a uh, visual scripting system mm -hmm. so that you can sort of drag and drop stuff. Oh, that's cool. <gasps> that makes it so much easier. Instead of code, yeah. I. It's interesting because I was looking at it and I, to an extent, you have to know like the programming elements to be able to understand it. But I still think it makes it more approachable, which is great. That kind of reminds of me of like code.org, the pro the types of projects you can do to learn. And there's a lot of that on there where they, they kind of teach you how to code by doing sort of the drag and drop. One of my friends uh, worked for code.org for the longest time. <laughs> hey, that's an awesome thing to do. That helps a lot of people yeah. get into programming. So that's mm -hmm. really cool of them. Well, that is so cool because that's something I love to see. Sort of related... Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. I, I'm sort of a related tech note. Um, uh -huh. The one tech question I can answer for you, though, is um, as the writer on the project, I used uh, a new tool this time around. I used uh, Inkle's um, 
Hinkle's uh, branching story uh, development tool called Ink okay. um, hmm. to do all of the uh, conversations. Uh, and I completely recommend it. It's uh, it's not a very complicated uh, piece of a piece of software, but it lets you sort of visualize and experiment with your story uh, in real time on the fly. That's wow! Really it's really a lovely bit of software. Yeah. That's awesome. I never actually thought about what writers go through. I mean, because again, I'm a programmer, so I'm kind of an Eric's boat. But seriously, though, like, you know, writing is hard. Like, I do yeah. writing on this, and I don't write for games. It's just more like very static writing. But when you do have to do dialogue trees and you need to make them kind of flow, like, I never thought about kind of the tools that right. writer might use. So it's cool to hear that there are tools. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. Yeah, it's my first one, and I, it made the world a difference. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. This is I'm neat. about to go check that out just because I'm curious about it now. Right? And this is what I love. It's just like, you know, before we used to have, you know, games would only come from the big studios because it used to cost so much to be able to create them because you needed a whole infrastructure to be able to make a game. But now, because these things are becoming more accessible, now you're getting really the passion projects from the people who are like, look, you know, I could do in game development, but I, I just want to make this thing happen. Happen. I, I have a dream. I want to see it come out and be played. Like uh, Five Nights at Freddy's is a great one. I mean, the guy started off as, you know, I, I make uh, Christian games that weren't doing anything. He's like, all right, this is my last vestige. I don't care where this goes. He wasn't affiliated with anyone, apparently. And he's like, uh, you ever been to Chuck E. Cheese? Just imagine that that wants to kill you. And... <laughs> That's where it came from, and suddenly it was like this huge sensation, because everyone's going, What's the story? You won't tell us! He's like, Ah, I know it. You don't. <laughs> but that is so I cool. Series. Oh, it's such a good <laughs> series. I cannot wait for Security Alert. What's the <laughs> new one coming out? I'm going to scream like a little bitch because I can't handle anything scary, but I, it's like watching Michael Jackson's Thriller. I used to watch it through like peaked hands, like, I'm not going to sleep, but I have to watch this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> awesome. Oh my gosh. So uh, sorry for you guys in chat. Um, I am watching your guys' chat, but I wanted to really give them a chance to, to chat because it's just so cool being able to talk uh, not only to game developers, but, you know, Mark and... Oh God! Are you joking, Mark and Eric? There you no, go. Yeah, Words no, are hard. I swallowed on the e. That sounds bad. Um, Mark and Eric. <laughs> We're gonna talk like that. I'm gonna need more alcohol. You no, know, yeah, we might have to go through a couple of these drinks because no, they're just awesome people, and the games they make are just so much fun. So, like I said, if you guys have not checked out Matter of Murder, I highly recommend it. Austin Translations is a great game as well, but uh, I think especially for the appetite of a lot of people, like they want something they can pick up, put down. Um, I think it's a great game for that, and it's one that we play uh, pretty often. Yes, yeah, Security Breach. Thank you, Cody. So, um, Eric and Mark, if you guys want to, so we've been having some problems lately with YouTube and posting of links in chat. So if you guys want to post it in discord, please feel free. Thank you guys so much, not only for spending time in chatting with us, but for also letting us be one of the first people to check out your game. I am yes. so excited to human resource someone <laughs> that might've been a little more. I don't dramatic. know if I want to work for your company. <laughs> Just saying. Have a little bit more alcohol, dear. I control your paycheck. Mm -hmm. um, oh. <laughs> I am so excited to check out this game. Guys, thank you so, so much for hanging out with us. I'm going to kill Discord for right now just because I'm getting a little bit of lag on the system and I want to you know, have the gameplay as clean and clear as I can. So thank you guys so much. And let me shut down the... Oh, no. Oh, we're going to run into... Oh, no, it's just Stand my computer doesn't like to... Oh, it's always technical difficulty. There we go. Okay, so let me go ahead and kill this. <laughs> Paul's like, hostile work environment! Oh, you haven't <laughs> seen hostile Storm work environment. <laughs> Whoop. It's here. <laughs> and there. Okay, cool. All righty. So we're going to yes. jump into the game. Let me quickly say hi to some people. There was a really good question in there. There so was. If you don't get it... Okay, you saw it then. Sweet. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I said there was and. Is that there, a, there, was? The, there was? Oh, there was? Okay, there you go. Emphasize. No. Uh, you go ahead and say hi to people in chat, and then you might see it. Okay. And if you don't, then I will point out. 
Let me backtrack a little bit and let me know if you guys are seeing uh, lag on the stream. I'm seeing it in Streamlabs. I think Streamlabs is having a little bit of difficulty uh, kind of rationalizing uh, resources between the things. Honestly, I ran the game for a little bit just to see how bad of a uh, load is on the system. Giggity. Um, and it didn't seem like it is. I think this is honestly just Streamlabs is being picky. So it's, it's taking a little bit of time to catch up. But what is up to... Snark, Uber, Rye, Eric, Russ, the Earl, Royal Clasher, scrolling, 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 Cody, AOL customer, Uber, Octarix, Blair, I think may have dropped, um, if she's watching this later, I, sorry, I wouldn't say hi, um, Ama, Eric, the other Eric, Eric. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Guy, or Gee, um, did I get everybody? It's a little framey. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing here too. Yeah, what's going on? Um, it's. I think it's Streamlabs is having a little bit of an issue with this. Let's let us know when we get into the game. If, if it's still holding up. I think the game's gonna hold, but I think our piece of it may just be a little. Yeah, but we don't matter, so it's fine. Yeah, it's like, let's be honest, it's fine. And I'm not saying that it's like, oh, poor pity me. Like, no, games. That's what we're here for. Damn it. That's what we're here games for. And drinks. Games and Games. Yes. So let me go ahead and switch on over so to the So the question that was posed ah. was, how can people in the chat help support the developers? Shit, I should have brought that up when we were talking. So. Um. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. I didn't know if we were. I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to interrupt, but because you had a really good. You know, time putting people in the hot seat. So <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad sometimes. Like I feel like I really should prep some people, but it's kind of fun just to get like that off the cuff kind of answer. And it's someone fair. even mentioned on here, like, "Oh yeah, that's looking like that a podcast we told you to do." So <laughs> we will get better at the format, but we're very happy that you guys are liking this. It's pronounced gooey. Oh yeah, graphic user interface. How are you doing, graphic user interface? <laughs> yeah, I'm that kind of a nerd. Yay. Oh, Eric. Yeah, this is a. Uh, not chopsticks. The, I tried to shove as many pens in my hair How are, as I don't understand possible. how they're flying out. That's kind of impressive. I, right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Mark, Eric, if you have any recommendations on how everyone, including us, can help support mm -hmm. you guys, like, I definitely really appreciate that, you know, it's obviously a very small studio putting this together. It's, and yeah. so anything, yeah. Even if it's just, you know, a sh good platforms to share it on mm -hmm. or like good timing to share it on or maybe you know come back into discord when it gets closer that you need uh you want a little bit more you know marketing support and we're here for you so oh he says the pens are perfect you are all so kind oh you're so kind <laughs> uh, so if it helps i've heard one thing from a lot of developers what really tends to help them is um reviews on stream uh i think you guys have a demo version that's becoming available so let us know if you know just playing that and getting some reviews on there may help a little bit on the traction. Bill, what's up? Sorry to flop on my hand. Oh, you poor thing. Wishlisting on Steam is huge. Oh, that's good to know. Actually, I think I already have this one wishlisted. <laughs> the second became available and she's going to do it right Stand by. now. Because I also have a shitty memory. So this is how I compensate. <laughs> Melissa knows. Oh, same. Yeah. It's like, you better write it on my hand like memento. I have a calendar and I live through it. That's true. She she reminds me about crap because I forget it all the time. Yeah. That's how you get woken up out of your nice, comfortable sleeping. Like, Melissa, we're supposed to go to tea time. Wake up. I'm like, fuck. Okay. <laughs> here we go. All right. So let me... How how do I Playing the demo is great, and feedback is also great. Wonderful. Yay! Yeah. So I guess it's under catalog then, right? Uh, We're doing this together, guys. Get out your phones. Get out your uh, your browsers. So on Steam, I go freaking can't... How the hell do I search on Steam on my phone? I never use my phone app for this. There we go. Search. Oh, I've never tried using Steam What's on the What's the name phone. of this game again? HRO Adventures... Oh, of a humanoid research. Yeah, I was going to say, once you type go. in HRO. And yeah, right. Yeah. It seems like there is nothing oh, that shares this kind of name. So, yeah, it's got, it says December 2021, and then it does have the demo below it for free right now. That is June so 16, cool. 2021. So Yay. I am definitely going to put the December one on here because I do want to play it when it's all out. I love the graphics on this, too. Look at Isn't that. It cool? It's so, like, ah. Uh, Oh. I'm just showing what the the logo is. It's nothing you guys haven't seen, but I'm just like so yeah. happy with the colors and the design. I have to ask if you guys are willing to answer who does the like the graphics for your work. 
Yeah, I, shoot. I think I asked him that like years ago because I wanted to know who came up with that like that black eye that's in um, Matter of Murder that looks so haunting. <laughs> <laughs> Item added to your wish list. Yay! Video. All right, let me switch on over to game scene. Let's see if maybe... Okay, so we might be... You know right, only fans? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the next game. Oh, and That's weirdly enough... Version. Oh, no, I think it's fine now because I haven't clicked Mark does. Game. Awesome. Mark, very well done. Yeah, the graphics are really cool. And I like how, like, each game visibly looks very, very different from each other. That's, that's mm-hmm. tough to pull off because you do get kind of married to a theme... Like, or it's just your natural style, right? And it can be that, too. Absolutely. Mm. It's listed as similar to Nonary Game Series. Interesting. Oh, uh, is that the, you know that one? the nine rooms, nine people, nine... I forgot what the other one... The 999. 9999! No, nine. not that one. But seriously, it's called 999 because it's nine nine rooms, nine people, nine hours or something like that. I would make it a version of that. It's just like nine Germans just sitting in a room like, why are we here? <laughs> <laughs> watch that. <laughs> the matter of murder eyes were all Mark. It was his idea to model it after Edward Gorey, too. Ooh. It's terrifying. And I love it. Sorry, noob question. Who's Edward Gorey? Oh, God. I remember hearing the name from a while ago, but I don't remember the context. Oh, Uber's played 999. Yeah. Nine, nine rooms, nine, nine persons, people, nine, nine doors. doors. There's lots of death in that game. It's we fun. may have to play that. It's a basically a sort of an escape your room. But you have to... It's one of those games you have to play multiple times in order to get the good ending. But it's interesting. So Funny you mentioned that, because we just got done doing Bioshock Infinite, and of course I got the worst ending. Oh. I'm, I'm... That is my curse in every game! <laughs> <laughs> just oh, discover 999. Yes, it, it is really good. It's definitely interesting, and I hope I'm sorry if I spoiled it for you by saying there's multiple endings, but... <laughs> well, no, that's good to know, because then you know there's replay value. There's true, so... It's gonna be hot tomorrow. It was yeah. pretty insane. Nine hot nine nine. Right the current Fahrenheit temperature in Arizona. Yeah, that's Which also I was true. sad. But like, I'm sorry, you guys were talking, and I know I made a face and it was pouty, but it's just because my ice melted in my drink so oh, quickly. Oh, that always happens. In here. <laughs> it was after we had like put the drinks in the fridge and whatever. Anyways, <laughs> oh yeah, we got to ask about what we're drinking tonight. Oh yes. Yeah. So what we got going on today is a uh, Negroni, except however, instead of vermouth, we are using Mr. Black Natural Code Brew coffee it's so, so good it's, it's a coffee, coffee liqueur, liqueur whatever it's, it's got some backbone yeah so i figured since we're gonna be in the office let's have you know who we always bring your coffee to the office or at least i do so <laughs> spike get your drink even Cheers. if it's water <laughs> especially if it's water because it's on fire in arizona mm-hmm. right now all right let's resource some humans I have no idea. Sounds like <laughs> this it's gonna good. be. You fun. say that, and it reminds me of the music video for Pink Floyd, "The Wall," where they're putting people in the meat grinder. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, don't I mean want to no. Be resource. I mean, that's why we offer, you know, insurance plans. <laughs> you can't be resourced until you have your pudding. How can you have any pudding when you haven't been resourced? <laughs> Anyway, sorry. That is so I funny. haven't actually had dinner yet. I really shouldn't be drinking right now, but fuck it. So. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> uh, self-inflicted. I love this music! Mark, did you do the music as well? Or was that Eric? Oh my god, that chin. I love Captain it. on the bridge. As you were, report, Mr. Chang. Maintaining course and speed along the border of the nonpartisan area as ordered, Captain. No sensor contacts, no sign of the Krimulax. Krimulax? Very good. Course change, Mr. Whitford. Bring her around to 221 Mark 11. But, 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 Cap did. (laughs) That would take us into the nonpartisan area. An illegal act. The Krimulax Republic would surely consider it an act of war if we. You have your orders, Mr. Whitford. Angry face. I love it. That is oh, so the animation's cool. so good. Eric says that he wrote the music. Nice. Congratulations on your new posting as the humanoid resources officer. Thank you, or I'll turn up in just a sec. I'm your personal administrative liaison, or PAL for short. I'm here to keep you up to date and to make your job easier. For example, you have received six mundane mail messages <laughs> in your inbox when you're ready to read them. I've taken the liberty of requesting a call with the captain to discuss the irregular course change. I might also suggest taking up the matter with the ship's navigator, Mr. Whitford. Of Tell course, if you need a little guidance, I'm sure your supervisor back on Space Base Octagon, Commander Sheridan, would be very happy to hear from you. 
Okay, I love whoever voiced this. That's yeah. really cool. Um, By the way, you guys, um, hold on a second. Let me crank I'm kind of like, up. don't get voice actors or actresses. I kind of dig it. Right? Totally fine of you. I'm not going to like judge, but it is, I do like the voices. Yeah, it's, it's going to look really like grainy for us. Yeah, it's, this is not how the game is playing. The game is playing super smooth. This is just Streamlabs having a friggin' hissy fit. Is there anything we could do to help? Because I could see this being really annoying. For yeah, and I don't want to give people the false idea that, the, like, it's oh, the game man, quality, it's just like, right? this is how the game runs. But yeah. you can see us and that. If you can hear us well, but the game, or the uh, stream is like, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's Streamlabs. Um... What's going on, Streamlabs? You okay, uh, no. buddy? Unfortunately, we can't change the encoder stuff. This should be how it, it should be set up. I think it's just... Like, we never have these problems with... Oh, wait, it uh, looks like it's kind of working okay now? Oh, it is because I've clicked out of it. Oh, it's when you click into it. That's yeah, I think if I can get this into windowed mode, I think that might help with it. Again, it's it's nothing on the game. This is just Streamlabs. Yeah, it's totally fine on our side. Pal sounds a bit like Vega from Doom 2016. I'm loving this voice. I think this is going to be really cool. What are we playing tonight? A brand new game. What's up, Lord of Cancer? Okay. Yeah, um, is it the... Is it... Oh, no, it's everything, isn't it? It's not just us, right? The game's it's, also doing it, it. Yeah, so the game's looking a little... Gotcha. Okay, yeah, but it isn't well in we, real life. So no, just FYI, not. guys. See, comms. Contact the captain immediately. Reach out to the navigation officer or appeal to your supervisor. Messaging. View inbox. Okay, he did mention that we have some emails we have to go through. Oh my god, my mother. <laughs> Close it! Close it! <laughs> Troubling news clips. Hi, honey. I know you don't like me to call when you're working, so I'm sending you this message instead. Have you heard all the scary news about the Kermulac Federation? The squibs say that those Kermie weasels, well, she's got a bias, are just waiting to pounce on a moment of weakness. And apparently there's an electron torpedo gap I never even heard of before. Be careful out there, sweet pea. You know how I worry. Ooh, I got this next one. Cool. <laughs> please, 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 don't use your dazzling, jazzling date, jazzling? I can't use, wow, my bad. <laughs> don't use your jazzling date at birth as your password to access critical shipboard systems. Personal information is easy to find in the official records and, along with your name, is all a malicious actor would need to infiltrate sensitive data banks. Your cooperation on this matter is not expected, but it would be a nice surprise. Cranks! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the stuttering is from Streamlabs. Actually, Eric, um... I think you mentioned when we were talking earlier that there might be a way to kind of jam this into a windowed mode. I'm thinking that might help Streamlabs. I was kind of being stuttering on it, but Melissa definitely wasn't. So if you're hearing stuttering, I think that's going to be a big problem. Are they hearing stuttering too? Yeah, are you hearing it? Because if so, then we really need to fix that. Yeah. Video is one thing, especially because it's not like a ton of animations, but... Audio is another. I'm not getting any alerts that, um... We're losing... Yeah, packs. like you're not losing packets. Um, so that's a good sign. It may just be the... Alt-Enter should talk... Oh, cool. Alt-Enter. Hey! <gasps> there we go. Oh, how's that, guys? Oh my gosh, I think okay. that fixed it. Audio sounds fine, so that's good. So maybe it was just me being silly. Oh my gosh, I think that fixed the problem. Wait, hold on. Uh, Let me make sure I'm clicked into the game. And still good. Two, one, two, one, two, one. Yeah, I that fixed it. Thank you. There you go. Thank you so much. So if you guys are streaming this or looking to stream this, like I said, the game's going to run fine. Your stream is going to run fine. But you may want to throw this into windowed mode. It just helps Streamlabs out a little bit better. OBS may be better about it. Um, people have been going that route anyways. Uh, so just hit Alt-Enter, and that will get you into windowed mode. And now we're ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Fuck yeah! Okay. Get it. All right. Let's see. Commander Condor. Is that who we talked to? No, it's Commander was Tidwell. Tidwell. <laughs> so many frigging commanders. <clears throat> From Commander Condor, Bridgeford. Uh, let's make him British. Seeking fourth play for Bridge. Third watch. Every other Sunday. We meet on the bridge. Bridge! <laughs> Alright, let's see if I can do this one. Specialist Spax. 
Spax. Spax. It sounds like Spanx, like when people say things. <laughs> right? Subject, upcoming vacation. Note that I will be away on vacation starting in three weeks time. Since we have only have one logistics officer assigned to the ship, during the period of my absence, a substitute logistics officer will be on loan to the Endeavor from Space Base Octagon. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> she will arrive in 20 days. In the meantime, be sure to play, plan your fuel and other critical supply needs carefully to minimize catastrophic interruptions during the transition. That works. Oh, you know what we gotta throw in one of these. Hold on. Oh god, vaccinations. <laughs> Too bad. Mendicing. <laughs> you may have heard. <coughs> speaking of vaccinations, <coughs> you may have heard of our recent outbreak of Batracool and Pox. Who names this shit? The <laughs> outbreak has been contained, and no crew members are currently showing any symptoms beyond me. I would like to point out. That Bactricool and Pox is easily preventable by a simple vaccination. I feel like I must insist that this vaccination, contrary to the opinion of some non-medical experts, in no way causes any side effects like hair color change or reduced attractiveness. That's what they told me. So please... If you have not been vaccinated, this is really turning into Fauci. Get yourself to my office ASAP. So Cody said, "I challenged Lufa to do a Southern voice or something." I don't know if this is gonna be Southern. It's probably you can more probably like rock a Southern. Well, more like you know, the old Western kind. Like I don't know. Are you talking about like the My Lord, I got my pearls. Or something my like pearls. It? I'll do the I'll do the uh, more like the western kind of southern. There like, you go, like Texas southern. How about that? <laughs> it's, I don't know if I can do it actually, but we'll see. I'm writing an amazing novel featuring as a romantic lead, the swashbuckling and humanoid resources officer aboard a swinging space armada ship. How would you like to help me out with a little research? You know, background material, inspirational st stories. Maybe an anecdote or something you'd like to share. Maybe you can just send me your logs and I'll sift through whatever you find useful. You the best. <laughs> I like the you the best. Yeah. <laughs> oh, guys, this might be a Unity thing. The Long Dark and some other games have equally weird oh. full-screen recording problems and are made with Unity, too. You know, that's interesting, because when we do um, Matter of Murder, I have it in windowed mode all the time, so that may be why we don't run into that issue. Oh, okay. So Windows compatible driver problem. Oh yeah, they I friggin' hate drivers. Okay, so I think we covered. I didn't listen to any of that. I know I was too busy. <laughs> I mean, something about don't use your birthday as a password. Someone's oh showing God. up in thirty <coughs> days. <coughs> I'm getting the password on there. <coughs> get it out. Get it out. One, Speak two, English. three, four, five. Same combination on my luggage. <laughs> uh, something about research material because there's somebody's writing a story. Which okay, you made a joke about the the pox thing about like who came up with the name. I've been writing science fiction and it is hard to come up with like alien names that don't sound right. Like, I'm like I write this and I'm like, does this sound legitimate or does this sound like super dorky? And people obviously think I'm making up words. Like, like it's hard. Cox, you're like I just try to name things like the way they name medicines. I take yeah. a couple of syllables and just shove them together. It's true. Also, for the record, I do like the naming in here. I'm like, like ooh, I don't want to plagiarize, but I'm getting ideas. Um, <laughs> Yes, uh, something about vaccinations. Oh yeah, we gotta get vaccinated, <laughs> otherwise we lose our attractiveness and our hair color. I feel like this is important. Do a quick scan over. I feel like this is important, <laughs> right? Because they, they seem like clues, is what I'm kind of hearing. Kind of reminds me, of, and I'm I'm totally guessing, but it kind of reminds me of those when you have the uh, charts of people and colors, and they sit next to you. who sits next to who, figure out the order. Oh That's yeah. What it reminds me of. Or play for bridge, third watch every other Sunday, meet on the bridge. Uh, we have the personal information one, which is oh, so if you can find a dazzling, dazzling date, date that's our password to access everything. So that sounds like that's actionable. Um, I don't know what a dazzling date is. Da -da 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 -da. Squibs, mothers are racist. We're good. Okay, <laughs> so. 
Contact the captain immediately, reach out to the navigation officer, appeal to your supervisor. I feel like we don't need to do these just yet. What are resources? Compendium of Regulations, Planetary Atlas, Guide to Alien Races, and Personnel. Well, we are human resources, so we should probably check out personnel. I guess. Ah, so. that one kind of looks like Eric. Oh. <laughs> so Simon Chang is Lieutenant Commander. So we basically got some IDs. Mm -hmm. Having flashbacks to uh, the Phoenix Wright games right now, because that was the last thing we did was we had to try to match up IDs to people. <laughs> Dostoyevsky, nice reference. What's that from? Uh, one of my favorite books. I want to say that's Crime and Punishment. <gasps> Distributed by Mind 53. <laughs> Can I be that character? Oh my god, look, he's so grumpy! It's, that's it. a, a, a snowmobile thing. Well, he's a theoretical physicist. That's probably why he's grumpy. <laughs> uh, oh, so am I getting... Uh, I'm getting a little bit of lag again. Damn again? It, system. it was fine a second ago. I know. I don't know why. As long as the sound's not lagging. If the sound's lagging, go Yeah, if the sound's lagging, then I worry. So, okay, so this seems just like a reference to a list of people that we have. Is there anything, like, maybe at the bottom? <laughs> Snark's like, I just realized you're playing as Pam Poovey from Archer 1999. <laughs> that was a great series. Oh, shit, that had all the newsletters in it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's a lot of people. What is up with his head? Well, that's rude. Can't help it. Born that way. <laughs> wow, Bertha Spangler looks really angry. Uh, Spax! That's Spax! We, we talked about Spax. Oh, the Dan Spax. That's what it is. Yvonne <laughs> Spax. Reese yeah. Tidwell has amazing hair. How does he get through doorways? I feel like he's I too tall. I have no clue. <laughs> he probably has to do it at an angle. I was like, you have a height <laughs> clearance. <laughs> Tronica 5000, unit 859. <laughs> yes. As far as he's Mr. Deadly, oh, yeah. Shit. I didn't read that. The complaints filed against. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We, we've got some... Um, Repeat offenders here. Ooh. Well, we know who took the vaccine here. Nice reference. Okay. okay. So Settings was... takes us back to that. Okay, cool. Let's go back to resources, see if there's anything else. Uh, so, compendium. Let's just like scan through this stuff really. Scan. Scan through scan. it. Scan. God, accents. <laughs> <laughs> so, shall use unnecessary force against any member of an assembled coalition of civilizations. Okay. Respect all active laws, blah, 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 blah. No one cares about laws. Um, I know, he's probably like, I'm wondering if Eric's just like, don't go blah, blah, blah. Actually, read it, damn it. <laughs> well, no, and I mean, I we're am playing this it. like most people would play. Yeah. You know, they, they have a certain temperature for reading, and then once you see uh, that, they're like, no. Nope. I'm trying to like quickly scan, so I am actually reading it. It's just like, oh, I see it, you know. Can I read? There's a lot of good stuff here. Member acknowledge the existence of persons, creatures outside the known chartered world, identified life forms. Good. Only in the case of an existential emergency <laughs> should. How do you quantify that? Minister aid for a uh, situation or crisis considered threatening or treasure. <laughs> oh my god. This is good though, so it does reward the people who do want to read because you're like, wow, someone really thought of this. This right. is pretty cool. It's basically like, that's the equivalent of don't call us unless somebody's dying. Exactly. Like, <laughs> uh, Commands that shall respond to requests for such aid without delay. Okay, no, 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 it's like rules going on. Um, our ship is permitted to visit the planet Chitthrit 9. <laughs> There's eight others? Oh, you know, we don't talk about this. Uh, <laughs> Warship belonging to a foreign power is discovered. The commanding officer of a vessel is required to identify the grounds for the ship's occupation to determine that their intentions are aggressive. The vessel may take action to protect and defend any and all coalition of civilizations, persons, or property under threat. The officer of a vessel is permitted to grant asylum to any individuals without seeking the permissions of the superiors. Final decision shall be left to the superior officers or Council of Representatives of the Assembled Coalition of Civilizations after a full assessment of the crust has been made. I'm wondering if this is going to play a little bit like Papers, Please. Like, it feels you a little bit like You need to remember like the rules to be able to say whether someone can or cannot pass. Uh, Utmost safety precautions when approaching a vessel. My god, this reads like Terms of Service. In accordance with intergalactic treaties, the personnel will honor the territorial boundaries. Okay. 
permitted to intercede in localized governmental conflicts to protect and defend the lives of our uh, ACC of members. Yeah. Hey, DK. And only, but only following an invitation to do so from local authority. Oh, okay. Or under the direct order of a space armada. So if council. they want to overthrow their government, they have to ask us first. I guess it's only polite. <laughs> Based on our personnel, are permitted to travel to a possibly dangerous locale without either obtaining express permission or being in the company of an appropriately equipped convoy. Mm -hmm. Commanding officers are required to regard the lives of their crew members. This can only end in failure. Oh, it's paramount. Oh, that's surprising. <laughs> I was not <laughs> expecting that. When confronted with any possible, possible. Poss sorry, cannot speak. Possibly threatening situation, commanding officers will prioritize the lives of the crew over the fate. Aw, oh, they're so nice. Yeah, so you prioritize the lives of the crew. Meanwhile, the ship blows up, and your crew is still fucking dead. <laughs> get, get them off the ship, ideally. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That is kind of prioritizing their lives if you're like, well, let's stop this from killing you. Let's see what some of these buttons do. Nothing, because they're not lit up. Oh, What's okay. under? So we wait. Did we click comms or messaging before? Uh, comms was we have these three options: contact the captain, reach out to the nav officer, appeal to your supervisor. And then, what's under messaging? Uh, our inbox, communications log. We looked at the inbox before, right? Did we yeah, we the, haven't looked at the. Oh, there's nothing. In there. Oh, okay, cool. So it seems like the next step. Oh, I guess we didn't look. We looked at the regulations. We didn't look at the atlas, did we? Okay, so this seems like it's more um, encyclopedia information that we might need to fall back you to. You might have to reference. Okay. And so... it feels like we're going to be able to come back to it, so that's why I'm not yeah. super concerned about learning it just yet. I might regret that decision. But <laughs> <laughs> that's, me, that's me making yeah. my own decisions about my life. And plus, I want to play this from kind of like a, you know, like, get me into it right away kind of a thing. Melissa here is taking the manual and boom! Yeah, that, that's Three what I'm going for. So it seems like we basically, this is a kind of choose your own adventure moment right now. Yeah, I think for all, of all of these, I don't think we have anything to appeal for. I don't think we need anything immediate from the captain, so maybe reach out to the nav, nav officer? Possibly, because I think what it is is that we made a decision to do something. We're going into illegal waters. Uh-huh. Um, I think it's had said, like, hey, talk to one of these people if you have questions. Fuck it, let's go talk to the navigation officer. Cool. Oh god, it's all about is this about the navigation I'm just gonna mix up the <laughs> the voices, sorry. Is this about the navigation data bank breach? Oh, I promise I'll change my password right away. And I won't <sighs> use my date of birth this time. <sighs> so the password debacle was a serious breach. But there's a legal course changes going on. Yeah, that was what she had. Oh, the, that's right, it's what she said. She, the beginning. Um hmm. Uh, I think between these two, now it all depends on how the game wants to reward you. Does the game reward you for, like, sticking to the code, or does the re game reward you for, like, getting at the meat? This might be the fact that I've been drinking a little. I wrote the Path of Chaos. I just don't know if that's number one or number two. Path of Chaos? Pick one that's crazier. This is more of a social call. Okay. <laughs> I want to... What do you have to say to that, Whitford? Really? That's a relief. This a light socializing. One crew person. Oh, okay, we're buttering him up for some info. I thought you were calling to grill me about the whole Omicron 6 disaster, which was in no way my fault. This guy seems like he's in the worst position possible. I was trying to turn this into a dating similar Eric and Mark. <laughs> That's what I was going for. <laughs> uh, well, that's new. I kind of want to know what I kind of want to know about Six. that, too. What, what are you talking about? You can incriminate yourself? Like, you should have just kept your mouth shut. That wasn't my fault. The Androidian ambassador was cute and I was drunk. You were drunk and you were piloting this ship? That is unacceptable. Hold, please. <laughs> I'm like, I already, everyone knows where I'm at right now. <laughs> now. Would you kindly say, please detonate? Oh my god, that was a great, great ses uh, series. What does that have to do with anything? Never proved I gave anyone any sensitive information. What did you do, dude? Ha 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 ha. Database security is always a serious Bobby issue. tables. I am human Sorry. resources, you know. This is all I have to Bible beat you with. Yes, I know. If some malicious actor were to get into the nav database, for example, they could tamper with all sorts of evidence. 
Really? Well, we have a way now to clear our tracks if we need to. Like evidence of an illegal detour into a nonpartisan nope. area. Back on track. I thought this was supposed to be a social call. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of navigating work, <laughs> work to do before we can break that treaty. Am I a superior officer? Is HR in command here? Because I'm just want to be like, well, we are you answer my questions. Let's see. I have a lot of navigating work to do. I don't want to help you with your damn job. That's what you get paid for. You gave way more company. He did. You must have lots of tree breaking stories. Oh shit, he may tell us everything. Uh, yeah. Do we give him more rope to hang him with? Yeah, let's go try it. Let's see if it if the subtle approach works. You must have lots of We might have shown our stories, cards, but no XKCD jokes, Lisa. You can't tell me you're not my <laughs> real mom! <laughs> Million of them. You have no idea. I'd love to hear them like right now. Buy me a drink, and I'll tell you anything you want to know. Which was kind of an issue at Omnicron 6, come to think of it. Can we get back to the illegal course change? Is there, like, any way to stop it? It's a done deal, oh, unless logistics officer Spex doesn't show her sh show to her shift. She's the one who gets fuel to the engines, but Spax always shows up to work. Unless you happen to kneecap her before she gets here. Or, you know, unless she's on vacation or sick or something. She's very reliable. So, that's interesting because we got comms from her. That's true. Saying that she was going to be out. Oh, see? I'm pretty sure. She I kind of read reads. it. I was doing the voice, but I was also trying to, like, actually read because <laughs> reading is hard apparently right now for me. <laughs> I know, right? The ship is lousy with slackers. Like you? Uh, let's see. Anything else? Friendly advice may not be too bad. Sure. Or he, if I say, if you don't know the half of it, he may rat out somebody else. Well, if you don't know, the first one seems like we're kind of asking him to give more information. The second, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, if we're building influence with him or. Ah, that's a good point. Or if we're kind of being like, oh, yeah. I don't know. You, you got a good point. I'll let you pick this one. Um, he likes to talk. And he's not afraid to uh, out himself. Uh, let's do friendly... Well, shit, no, because I'm, I'm like 50-50 here because a bit of friendly advice... Analysis paralysis. This is why yes. I struggle with games like this. And you try to make <laughs> me play them regardless. Go with the top one, because I was thinking about one. Okay. bit of friendly advice? Oh, sure, what is friends? it? No, I don't... Oh. oh, that's from us. Got it. Stay away from cute alien ambassadors when you're hammered. And change that password of yours. I guess we're trying to have, warning. Like, order, I guess. <laughs> I promise, as soon as all this is over. It's never gonna be over. I'm sure we'll all sleep better. Oh, wait, did I invite you to my <laughs> murder mystery dinner party? <laughs> I understood that reference. <laughs> what is that from? Isn't it... I figured that was kind of like the, uh... The reference to Matter of Maybe even... That's why I took oh, it Oh, okay. But it's actually a thing, too. But I'm gonna take it as a reference to Matter of Murder. Cool. So. Way to cross-reference. I have to go. I'll be in touch about that drink. Oh, 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 shit has access. Sort through the labyrinth's computer files until you arrive at a login screen for the navigation database. Go get his name. Go get his name. Who was his name? It was um, Whitford or something like that. What's his date? Resources? What's his date of birth? Yes. It was... Uh, personnel. Personnel. Yeah. This is like, uh, what's it called? Shit. That game you told me that we played a little bit and then we were like, never touched it again. Um, <laughs> except I played it. Oh, the black... Black Watchman? Black Watchman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. need to, like, go research. Okay. Which for That guy. What's his birthday? 387-1101. I'm gonna type that in here. 387-1101. It's just gonna be one number. Uh, but it's Whitford. Oh, shoot. Is it gonna be his first name and last name? Or last name and first name? Oh, well, hopefully there's not, like, a limited number of attempts. Or, like, what was name? Like Whitford? <laughs> Whitford. It's probably gonna be the full name of oh, Hiccups, sorry. Ah! Got nice. it! Edit oh. Ooh. Edit the planned flight path to conceal the endeavor's upcoming violation. To nonpartisan. So I guess if we click it here, it looks like we're around. I wonder if we should be. Do we want to talk to anybody before we pick an option? Oh, the only thing we can do is report. 
Well, there was a contact the captain and the appeal. I wasn't sure if the contact was That's to true. discuss. Contact the captain immediately or appeal to your maybe, let's see. Actually, you know what? Maybe this is the different options that we could take. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's go ahead and click one of those. Let's see what we can... Oh. Nope. Oh. Whitford... 387-1101. Thank you. I think. Cool. 387 1101. Hmm. <laughs> Altering the records may have unintended effects on the integrity of the. Oh, I should be doing this in the in the voice. Altering the records may have unintended effects on the integrity of the navigation system. Not to mention Mr. Whitford's career. Committing to this action will also end this act. Are you sure this is what you want to do? He's a fucking liability. That's win-win to me. I'd say so. Should the integrity commit? of the navigational system is like, okay, that's a little suspect. I don't care about Whitford. Fuck it! Commit! My apologies, Lieutenant, but you asked me to alert you when the ship was about to drop out of space-time. Your tampering with the navigational records appears to have gone unnoticed. Oh. There will be no official record of the endeavor ever having been in the prohibited nonpartisan area. Though, of course, that's exactly where we are, uh -huh. even as we speak. Oh, shit. Okay. I thought we changed our course. Well, I think that's what they're implying is like, oh, we didn't actually, like, it's like, oh, there's no evidence that we ever left, you know, because because we didn't leave, right? Like, it's kind of, oh, that's my take on it. Okay. I could be wrong. That's fair. Episode 1, Act 2! Oh, Dropping out of space time, Captain. <laughs> Discrepancy oh, between the sensors and the star charts, Captain. We are not where we're supposed to be. Where are we then, Lieutenant? It would appear, sir, we're in orbit. Around Kermulus Majoris. The homeworld of the Kermulak Republic. <laughs> Dramatic music! <laughs> I love it. The music is great. Welcome back, Lieutenant. This looks like it will be a busy shift. You have six low-priority messages in your inbox. The ship's physician, Dr. Singh, has asked to speak with you. HRO protocol would suggest you reach out to the navigator, Mr. Whitford, to determine the cause of the error. Also, this is highly unusual, but an unidentified communications channel between the Endeavor and someone opened when we dropped out of space-time. Hmm. So we okay. got a couple issues here to deal with. Why don't we go through the messages first? Yeah. Just so we get a little bit of context. Oh, wait, not yet. Yeah. Messaging. You inbox. I'm just, actually, do you mind going back for one quick second? Sure. I think, no, go back to messaging, but click on the comms. Look, communicate. Is that, okay, I think maybe that's just tracking the communications we have with people. Got it. Okay. That's my take. Uh, we didn't actually look at it last time. It was blank the last time, too. Uh, let's see. Spring Publications Magazine! You wanna take this one? Oh, uh, sure. Cool. Let's see, call for entries. We all know just how effective a well-timed inspirational publication can be in turning around a crew's morale in times of crisis. Have you published any exceptional pamphlets just in the nick of time? We'd love to see them. You might win a coveted Pamphy for excellence in reassuring literature. Visit our informational portal for deadlines of much information and enter during the contest. And good luck. <laughs> I like it. Oh, it's our mother again. Mother! Oh, shoot, hold on. Tell your children not to look my way. <laughs> oh, it's gonna sound a lot like yours, but here we go. Pet, pet, pet. Pamphy's uh, submission window is is open. Hi, honey. Uh, no, no rush on this. I, I, I'm just staring at the computer screen, uh, like the meme does. But I, I wanted to make sure you know you knew that they're they're accepting submissions for this year's Pamphy's already. Don't let your bitter loss from last year discourage you. I think your inspirational publications are the best. I have them tacked onto the fridge. They certainly inspire me to try to be a better mom. I'm already the best mom. And if you wanted to write back to say that it wouldn't be possible- This mother's turning either very New Yorker or Jewish. Uh, 
to say that it wouldn't be possible for me to... Oh, there's a voice. To me there to yeah. be a better mom. I probably really like that. Yep. We're going for Jewish mom. <laughs> At least it's on top of this. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How do you always say that word? Is it Einson? Ensign? Ensign? Is yeah. it Ensign? Uh, Williams. Oh, I'm missing Trunkle. Oh, I hope you find your Trunkle. <laughs> okay, let's see if I get this. <laughs> my bad Trunkle, teeny tiny, seems to have slipped out of my stairway room again. <laughs> if you see him, you gotta remember not to feed him. Not even if he looks really, really, really hungry. Just call me right away. And I'll bring the restraint box and stone her poom. Yeah, never your, feed your, uh... Your trunk me. <laughs> your mogwai after, uh, midnight. <laughs> Amazing they haven't remade that movie. Gremlins. Just wait, I'm sure. Oh, it'll, yeah. That cause... movie fucking freaked me out in middle right? school. Right? It's terrifying. Although I love the second one because they do New York, New York. God, Lee has gone full care. No, if I went full care, it'd be like, um... I'd like to see the HR manager, please. <laughs> like, hey, Chris. All right. Hey, Chris. Uh, speaking of Karen, hold on. Karen Condor. <laughs> yeah. Karen Condor. Sensitive bio scans. As I'm sure you're aware, and there are some sensitivities surrounding a member of the crew and an abducted family member who may or may not be held on Kermulus Majoris below. For this reason, bioscans of the planet will not be made available to the crew generally. Please handle any inquiries about this policy with your usual professionalism. <laughs> Uh-uh. All right, Specialist Hanex. Rescheduling training. I wanted to follow up with you about my mandatory cultural sensitivity training. Okay, Eeyore. How is it possible that I can't reschedule? Not under any circumstances. What if I had a genuine emergency? <laughs> There's got to be some wiggle room on this. Even as the scheduling system insists that there isn't, please contact me to discuss. Oh, bother. <laughs> I kind of felt like when I was going into that, you guys remember the characters from, it was the alien species from Mass Effect that's like, uh. like excitement, we are happy to see you. Like, because <laughs> they can't emote, so they, they, they emote through their pheromones, and because people can't detect them, mm -hmm. they, like, always, they, that's how they compensate for it. That's what made me think of, like, that works. All right, I'm going to attempt, I know his name is Dostoevsky, but I cannot do Russian at all, so I'm going to attempt a German accent for Lieutenant Commander Dostoevsky. Mein Gott! Please be aware that the escape pod subsystem will be down from 9.06 to 9.20. Exactly! For regularly scheduled maintenance. During this time, speedy emergency evacuation will not be possible. Please plan any operations which might result in the destruction of the ship accordingly. And if you want an exception, 9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.
Well, I have to admit, I never thought I'd see Cremulus Majoris in person. Not after all this time. Sounds like there's a sad story in there somewhere. You don't know about my Menjula. Sorry, I'm uh, new to this posting. Ah, uh, I guess I'm just used to whispering. The rumors. My daughter's plight is a staple of mess hall gossip. Or at least that's what I've been led to believe. Ah, oh, it's tearing up my throat. And now to be in orbit of Kermulus Majoris after all these years. Mm. I guess we could be empathetic. But like, HR doesn't know empathy, so... Well, that's true. <laughs> Nine! <laughs> Sorry, HR rips. I love you. <laughs> Please don't fire me. Uh, I don't know. I would say one or three. So if we throw three, we might get some sympathy points, and she might open up a little bit. One keeps us right on path. I don't know. What do you think? I'm kind of like, you know, get what we want. So we go number one. Number one? Cool. Damn it, tell us. This is an interrogation. She starts shaking her by her <laughs> tiny neck. Where are you hiding them? <laughs> what happened exactly? My Manjula was everything you could want a child to be. Bright, empathetic, an accountant, a little daredevil. And a nightmare every once in a while. Teenagers, you know. They never call their mother. But on balance. And? It's an old story. She was in the wrong place. After the Kermulac seized the agricultural colony at Yizpor's Prime during the 18 Days War, they brought her back to this planet as a prisoner of war. Huh? Has she been held ever since? If she's still alive, I know so little about her fate. It's a kind of torture, Lieutenant, the not knowing. I think the top. I'm like, sorry, yeah. Lisa Empathy's coming through. Let's go with the number one, because the other two are kind of neat. I know, right? <laughs> Relax won't tell you anything. They're a face. famously closed mouthed lot. The mental health of one bereaved human parent aren't very high on the priority list. Number one again. Yeah. This is why I'm bad about playing evil characters in games, because I'm like, but I just want everyone to be I happy. I just want to hug them. <laughs> is there anything I can do? Except for when I want to push mercenaries out of windows. Oh, well, then, then there's that. <laughs> I'd hate to put you out. I'm sure you have a million things no, that need no, your attention. No, no, I'm not busy. You know, anything that could give me a lead up on anything that helps. Like, I'm just a mother without a child, but no, you, you go do your things. You go do your HR things. <laughs> you don't ask. I can't help. When we arrived here, the sensors would have made an automatic sweep of the planet. If someone could just get me access to those scans, it would tell me for sure whether there are any human life signs down there. Okay. I don't think that's against the rules. Commander Condor. Or by the book science officer won't release them to me. Oh, our by the book science officer won't release them to me. I've asked. You're the commander. I don't have access to that data set. I can try to get you that scan data. I'm kind of curious. I wonder if if this is going to lock us out if we go get the information and come back. But I'm kind of curious in number three. Let's do it. And if you discover she's down I there. I don't want to commit because I have commitment issues. So. <laughs> <laughs> One step at a time, Lieutenant. I haven't allowed myself to hope in a long time, Aww. let alone plan for the future. I should go. Good luck. 10 likes! Ah, 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 ah. Thank you guys so much. Alright, let's go just quickly. I want to see if you go back to resources and you check the regulations. Is there anything about that that we should be concerned about? Just see, a necessary force? No. Expect active laws? No. Encounter with a. Oh, weirdly enough, access just popped up. Mm. Uh, if encounter with previous on life form? No. Case of essential emergency aid. What? Is, okay, what is an existential emergency? Is that like a midlife crisis kind of thing, or because that, that's very debatable? I think. Hey, Jenna. Go for emergency aid. No ship is permitted to visit the planet. We're not there. A warship belonging mm. to the foreign power is discovered. No. Commanding officers permitted to grant asylum to any individuals. So if we're able to maybe rescue this person, yeah, oh, that that's might true. Come into play. Um, 
approaching a vessel. That's not the same case. Uh, on our territorial boundaries, we don't know of any just yet, except yeah. for the no, 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 because circumstances trespass in alien space are not intergovernment. Which I don't think we're in right now. No, we avoided it, right? Yeah. Uh, personnel are permitted to intercede in local government conflicts if asked. Um, they're permitted to travel to possibly dangerous locale without special permission. Yeah. Don't think we're there yet. Commanding officers of Space Armada are required to regard the lives of crew da, 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 as paramount. Let's see what Axis is letting us see. Tap your way to the ship's, ship's mainframe main So I feel like we gotta get a little bit more data. Yeah, I agree. Um, track them down? Yes. Yeah. You wanna do this guy? Nope, let me rephrase that. You wanna do the voice for this guy? Don't my life. Uh, <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to think of a good voice. Be, be, I'm kind of thinking Frenchman a little bit, but I'm yeah, trying to see French. if I could actually pull it off. I'm trying to, like, alright, channel the guy from, uh, what's it called? The, uh, Okami game. Ah, it's the HRO. <laughs> what's up? I'm kind of busy. I have a sort of mystery to solve. There we go. Got that it. works. I good still job. got it! My high school French. <laughs> I thought you were gonna. Oh, do you want we to had it? an appointment. Right in the middle of this crisis, we're in because of coordinated navigational bat data bat bat blah, blah, blah. Okay, hold on, drink yeah. please. <laughs> Reboot. Lisa Dot Exe stopped working <laughs> because of collected navigational data banks. Bad timing, maybe, but yeah. Maybe change your fucking password next time. <laughs> okay, d'accord. So, how are things going down on B Dick? Oh. My heart is crazy. I don't know which one to pick. I just oh, want to Oh, let's go with crazy. My heart is wow. crazy. It's either he's angry or he's about to lose a game of Connect Four. Sorry, you guys can't see what's behind his head, but it looks like a Connect Four game. Crazy. I've been trying, or I've been busy too, trying to figure out what happened to the Nav Debe. Debe, Debes. <laughs> it looks like someone deliberately altered the records. And the decor. Oh my god, sorry, I didn't. I really should have eaten before during this stream. <laughs> Apologies. And the distorted data landed us here at freaking French. Carmelis. Carmelis. Majoris. There you go. What are the odds? I mean, that was spectacularly luck unlucky. Was it intentional? I mean, if there was a Camelic agent on board. But we'll find out soon enough. Tidwiz started an investigation. Uh, I would probably pick the first one. That's what I'm thinking. Do you have any know. leads? Does he have any leads? Apparently, the nav database was act from a console on um, act. They use that term very lightly. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> B-Tech. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, if your password hadn't been so odd, we don't want to let him know that we're using his password. I wanted the last one because I think that's a nice little red herring. To I think so because I feel like the other two may incriminate us, but the last one's just like conspiracy theories. I'm like, I mean, yeah. I guess if you if you know you believe the logs. I heard that Whoa, there was God. a software push that wasn't necessarily reliable. You know? Right? Poor programmers <laughs> got all up in our face. When in doubt, blame the engineers. <laughs> I'm an engineer. You believe the logs. <laughs> I do, and more importantly. The blast believes them too. The logs are the first place investigators go when an and can't then act. We may have a problem with shipboard security. You think? You think? You think? I don't know. How to say that with a French accent. I don't know how the French say that you word. <laughs> what can we do about it? That if it was, if I were talking to the person who recently breached the nav debit and got me in all sorts of professional hot water, whoever that might be. I might suggest they cover the little tracks a bit better. 
I totally didn't say that right, but whatever. Hmm, let's see. What tracks? Sounds like you've done this before, or are you just trying to deflect blame? I don't think he was involved. No, but it's kind of nice to uh, act accusatory. Oh, that's true. But I don't know. Like, what tracks might be... Like, where, oh, what's going on? Like, we want to help sort of thing. The other two sound more... Accusatory. accusatory. Yeah. Maybe... I wasn't going to go with the first one because I was like, oh, it might incriminate us more, but I'm kind of like, maybe playing innocent might help. Yeah, he's a little loose lip sinks ships. Yeah. What tracks? The system keeps stabs on who accesses which databank. I can't review those logs, but Tiswell can. So whoever did the act should make sure they erase them ASAP. Does the detective need or just a penguin need? Ah, uh, it's up to you. Who acts? But we went through his credentials, so how would it? Unless there's like some weird ass biometric shit that's tied to us, like. But we haven't tried logging as Tidwell though. No, but I feel like that might seem... I don't know. I mean, the thing is, like, I don't understand how we could be incriminated when we use his permissions. Oh, it said that we weren't. Yeah, but he's saying, like, oh, if, you know, I was talking to the person who recently breached the nav DB, got me in all sorts of hot water, whoever that might be, I might suggest they covered their tracks Oh, like little. they're talking to us specifically. Hey, Flip and Zippo, how are you doing? It's hard because I'm an engineer, so we always pick the wrong answer. <laughs> I always feel this way. When people are like, hey, here's the obvious answer for you, are like, no, it's gotta be this other thing, and that's why I still can't be the Black Watchman. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> the system error, then our bad space-time jump is no one's fault, right? I hadn't looked at it that way. Anything else? No. I'll let you get back on whatever it is you do. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Lieutenant is actually French. Because Lou means left, which is why in England they say Lieutenant. Oh! That's my I always anyways. wondered why that was. <laughs> Lieutenant Sebastian. I'm arranging matches. <laughs> that is a joke. <laughs> oh, I, I want to watch that again. Your undergraduate hacker days come in handy as you pull up yesterday's database access request. With a click, you'll be able to delete any records of your tampering. Oh. Ooh. But it would be the navigation database is what we would want to... Delete. Um, if we were going to go about that approach. What so, was the other option in the comm? Or the... Yeah, it was comms, right? Which one was the one we We're just down to risk opening the unidentified channel. We'll be good. Um, yeah, I mean... That's I don't. Still the same. This is to basically figure out who's down there. If we were going to take this, I guess we could go. Um, wipe. One quick second. Can we go back to messaging? Uh huh. Because I was too busy doing accents, so I was like <laughs> kind of only half paying attention to what I was saying. Go to communications log. This should have, and then view Whitford's, and scroll all the way down. Let's just make sure, like. He's giving us tidbits on this. System keeps tabs on who access data bank, can't review those logs, the tidbit can, so whoever did this hack should erase them. I still just don't understand what we're implicating about ourselves that would require us to erase them, if that makes sense, because we used his credentials to get in. Yeah. Um, Rasp is in two. Oh, can you keep going? Nav database was hacked from a console and VDEC. How do they know we're hacked? Did while starting an investigation. I almost wonder if we're like, oh, he tells us to, uh, that to us, and suddenly they're deleted. Like, ooh, did we just implicate ourselves? Oh, shit, you're right. That could be a, uh, what do they call it, like a false flag or something like that? Hey, Trex, this is uh, this a is why game, I can't play games like this. <laughs> from the developers of uh, Matter of Murder, Worthing, and Moncrief, and we are testing it out live for the first time. And it's, it's a puzzle, sci-fi, kind of like an opera. It's really cool. This is why I struggle with these games so far, because I'm like, well, then we should do this. But what if they want us to think that? Like, right? <laughs> I'm just like, I can't. You kind of entrap yourself. Analysis paralysis. So, is there any point in deleting anything else, though? Definitely no, it seems like. But well, unless there was something, because we did get, um, so there was the communications that went out. Uh -huh. And that's still curious, um, but I wonder if we're going to... Um, if you go back to okay, that's just that. comms, you know, it says risk it. We already have some risk, but it's just like... But if we talk to them, we may be able to go into edit and delete the communication if we need to. That's actually very 
very wise because ah! if we open up communication, we can forget the navigation one. Yeah, fuck but it. We can walk. Ah, Melissa. Okay, let's go. Let's try it. Okay. Whatever. Two way doors. We can always replay the game. Yes. You want to take that? Oh, just comment on him. Jesus, like, you don't need to point it out, man. <laughs> oh, wow, you're a camera like Not that that's a problem or anything. <laughs> in contact with our ship on an encrypted channel. Oh, that's the guy down below. I can only surmise that you are not my scheduled contact. This conversation is over. I don't think you understand. I decide when this conversation is over. Do you see who holds the pen in her pocket? <laughs> or just answer me one thing. I don't think we have anything to incentivize or threaten him with, so the first one's not a great option. This one, he looks pretty antagonistic. So, maybe the last one? Maybe. I'm worried that it's gonna he's gonna shut the phone on us if we pick it, and the first one might lay one more, but also, too, maybe Oh, that's won't. true. It could incentivize him. Yeah, because it seems like he's having a, a secret contact. So if we're like, oh, we're not the person, but just in case, like, tell us this one thing, he's gonna be like, mm. that's my take on it. But no, I'm that works. Totally like, we're trying to basically uh, cold read him. Yeah. Whoa, hi. In your face! Literally! I believe it is you who is lacking situational awareness. Leave this serious business oh, to the adults, rude. little officer. Anything you do will only hinder our plans. <laughs> That's very possible. Your honesty is refreshing. You know what? Talk to me, please. Talking is for the weak. If you truly do not wish to endanger this def defection, almost that was almost another word, attempt, then you will do nothing. Forget everything you know about me. Are you trying to defect? Wait, there was something in the resources about. Can we go take a peek? Yeah. Oh, oh shit, shit, no we can't! Oh god, what was in the- oh, yeah, because we could take Asylum, right? Yes. So maybe we- let's see if- maybe the first one again? Yeah. Wait, are you trying to defect? Do you know who you are peppering with impertinent questions? I am a commandant with the Kermilak 5th Echelon. Of course, my rank will soon be forfeit. You may call me Colonel. He seems to respond to a little bit of a show of force. Yeah, I don't know. What you think, man? I don't think two's gonna get us far. I'm torn between one and three right now. Same. Um, I'll take one. You take three. Rock paper scissors for it. Come on, okay. Fuck. Okay. I hate losing. It doesn't matter if it's the right answer. Fuck. <laughs> Which one did I have? One. Yes. Okay. Answer my question. Patience, little officer. I am what is known as the high value intelligence asset, and your Captain Spangler is risking much to aid in my escape. This guy doesn't keep like anything under wraps at all. Nope. Doesn't look like your defection is quite going as planned. Your unplanned arrival around Kermulus Majoris is problematic. I will require three days to reach your current position. Somebody must buy me that time. Can I attempt it for two? Because he I'm seems legit. Two. Even, but he, I mean, it could be... I don't know, the fact that he name drops somebody and yeah. there's a Spangler on there makes me feel like this is legit, especially since it was coming through, like, not secure comms. Agreed. So, I, let's I go two. two. It takes two, baby. Scheduling the elaborate formal surrender ceremony will be a top priority for my people. The Endeavor's capitulation would be a public relations coup for the Republic. Uh, assuming that's true... My people will be unable to resist the spectacle of your Captain Spangler personally surrendering the CSS uh, Endeavor. Uh, what? Yeah, they will wait for her presence at a public ceremony, thinking foolishly that time is on their side. Is she, like, legit, actually? That's surrendering us? Because, um... I don't see why he'd have a reason to lie. We just jumped on this comm. Well, I was trying to help her 
this person's trying to help them do facts, so it's like, well, maybe they're just gonna, like, make a show of it. That's possible. But, uh, I suppose I could pack her schedule so she can't attend any formal ceremonies. If it will gain me the three days I need to reach you, then you have at it, little officer. In the Not meantime, little. tell no one of this conversation. Your ignorance may yet be a shield to you. Hey, Jello Head. I do like the graphics a lot, though. Yeah, they're very cute. Ooh, should we pack our schedule? Yes. Mimetic course to be applied. By blocking out the captain's schedule with a training program, you hope to delay the official surrender of the ship, allowing the defector time to reach your position. Wasn't there something about training that was going to come up in the last one? I thought so. Yeah. What happens if you choose? Mimetic course to be applied. <laughs> it's a oh, drop down! To... Something about three days. Yeah, so... So the politics of command? I would say so. He needed the three days. Yeah. Um, it. It ends the act. I realize that I'm interrupting your scheduled recreational period, Lieutenant. My apologies to your clothing optional Batraculin Baccarat League, but I thought you would like to be updated on recent developments. The Kermulax have announced that since the captain will soon be available again, the official surrender of the endeavor will take place in two days. And sensors are registering the unexpected arrival of a single Kermulax shuttle. Well, that's what we were kind of expecting. Are you streaming tomorrow? I think I am. I don't know what specifically I'm... Sh uh, I was going to stream something you don't like Horror. I think I was gonna do horror, and I forgot what it was. I mean, but, I like. I don't play horror, but I like horror. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. That's. I just too chicken shit to play horror. But I honestly <laughs> find horror to be like one of the more interesting game genres because there's so much psychology that goes into it. That's true. Like how to scare people, right? So. Yeah. So Snark, I'm gonna have to remember what it was I was gonna stream, but chances are yes. Well, now I want to know. Horror. <laughs> is it something new? I thought so? New sensor contact, Captain. It looks like a Kermulak shuttle is breaking from the fleet. Captain's being a pain in the ass. Life support. We're being hailed. I am Commandant Kurnal. Hey, it was close. Kermulak 4th Echelon. I formally request political asylum with the coalition. Yes. Drop your shields so my shuttle may dock. With all these Kermulek Warcraft surrounding us? Captain, dropping our shields would be suicide. I'm well aware of that, Commander Tidwell. We appear to be caught in the middle of an old-fashioned Saurian standoff. <laughs> what? I just want her to be like, I'm aware nice of that, but I have purple hair, so you're going to listen to what I say. While you right? were away from your desk, you received four low-priority mail messages. The ship's theoretical physicist, Hivemind53, claims to have important information to share with you regarding the Kermulak standoff and would like you to call him. Torpedoman Third Class Papazian's annual review is that. scheduled to begin in four minutes, and we now have a direct line to the Kermulak Defector's shuttle. Cool. Hey, Jeffrey. Hey, Jeffrey. Set. Oh, I know what I was going to stream. I was going to do, um... Doki Doki Literature oh, Club. Oh, fuck, no. Never mind. I'm but out. I'm out. <laughs> that's why I'm like, I know she's not going to want to do it's that. It's not j because it's horror. It's because that game scarred me for fucking scissors for the longest time. Yeah, so. that's true. <laughs> but the problem is the DLC is not available to the 30th. Herc. So. Herc. I we will do something tomorrow. Herc. Okay. I got messages. Somebody to talk to. Let's see, we can respond to an inquiry. We can continue the annual review or interface well, with the Let's go to our messages first. You in books. Uh, from Exo Chang. Requisitioning high value equipment. You see the spike in crew members requisitioning budget busting specialty pieces of equipment. As a cost control method, I've restricted requisitions to your office. If people want mm. expensive toys, they will have to go through you. Needless to say, be ruthless in curbing expenses. Any cost overruns will come out of your department's budget. So no more pens. <laughs> Special Specialist Williams Dead Hamsters. Uh, hi, Charo. Um, 
not sure quite what happened, but are you aware that all the hamsters are in the bio lab up and died last week? Like, all of them. <laughs> all at once. I, uh, I hope no one is conducting any unauthorized off-the-books weapons research. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, plus, someone owes me, like, 11 hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel proud of that one, not gonna lie. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> Let's see. Oh god, Adrian. Ugh, how does he still have my phone number? <laughs> Can't we talk? Um, I'm sorry, we left things the way we- Ah, damn it! My southern's blending into my British. I'm sorry, we left things the way we did last time- Ah! I'm just gonna roll with it. You're doing fine. It's it's just gonna go places. Last time we talked, we really shouldn't have poked that metaphorical bear. Are you in coalition space somewhere? Maybe we could get together when you have a little leave. Anyway, you know where to find me. Miss you. Delete. See, Lieutenant Commander. This oh, boy, let's see what your Russian's like. Oh, I, w I wasn't even gonna try to do Russian because <laughs> I can't. I just try to think of the bear, but I that can't. Works. I can't do it. Like, <laughs> how's your German? Oh, I could. I could try. <laughs> like, oh, I shouldn't have to announce. Oh, I can't do it. It comes out French. Fuck. Yeah, see. <laughs> I can kind of hear it, but all right, I'm gonna take a different approach. That works. It. Fuck it. <laughs> I shouldn't have to announce this to the entire crew. Oh, the but guy who please, sings when he talks. Please, during this time of emergency, don't do anything that will cause a sudden announced drain on the power supply. Amen. I'm looking at you, have my 53. Preach! I don't really buy that you're reading some monstrous power requirements. Are the Power result of increased electrical toothbrush usage? Toothbrush usage. Please be responsible, crewmates. Mac drop. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that, that was. That was fun. I'm go back to drinking. <laughs> okay. Mom and Dad are like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> That's their problem. They made me, yeah, so they should true. deal with the consequences. <laughs> All right, so um, let's maybe in do the inquiry first. Is my kind of take. Yeah, we got five minutes, right? <laughs> Social requirement. Polite greeting. Pausing for response. You wanted to talk to me about something. Conclusion. Rational science base thought these two clear communications of commonly held truths. Couldn't this have been an email? <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, rationality should govern all interbeing interactions. Uh, I think maybe the second one. Yeah, I'm like two or three. Yeah. I'm more of an intuitive communicator, I guess. Assertion. My communication with you serves a greater purpose. Great! What would that purpose be, if you care to tell us anytime soon? <laughs> I wish to provide you with a status update. Work on our experimental work bubble drive is ongoing. The prototype is nearly complete. Sweet. Is it gonna kill us? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific! Why is that important? Theory. Such a drive system could instantly <laughs> move the Endeavor vast distances. What's the catch? That's a good question. With catch. Confession. There is a small but non-zero possibility of catastrophic failure. Loss of the Endeavor and her crew would result. Oh, what are you waiting for? Turn. Wait, really? I don't want to turn it on. <laughs> is that an example of intuitive communication? Clarification. Work on prototype drive has hit a roadblock cause of delay, the requisition for a necessary quirk field calibrator <laughs> has not been filled. People only really call me when they need something. Right? That's so true. Um, 
maybe one. I mean, we can technically help with that. We don't have to necessarily fulfill it, right? Yeah, because yeah. it's a requisition. So let's just let's just white lie it a little bit. Yeah. We'll decide if we want to do it. Yeah. Assurance, your assistance would be most welcome. Together, we will make theoretical physics history. Sounds like keep that to the bedroom. Be <laughs> <laughs> some confident. Our quark drive experiment has a 243% higher chance of success than Torpedo Man's <laughs> third class Papazian's ill conceived secret biological weapons project. This whole freaking ship is a no HR zone. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> We're just like, it's like we went on a, like, what was it, um, deep sleep hibernation vacation and we came out <laughs> and we're like, the fuck have you been doing while we've been out? Like, uh, first one, because I would like yeah. to understand what the hell has been going on while I've had my back turned. Discovery, you were unaware of Torpedo Man's third class Papazian's unauthorized experiment with a new weapons technology which targets the oxygen carrying blood cells of biologicals. Expression chagrin. That's not an answer. <laughs> it's always <laughs> the quiet ones. Assurance, there is no need to share my evaluation of Papazian's project. It might be misinterpreted as baseless criticism. Ooh, I'm kind of tempted for two because I wonder if that's going to press Yeah. Like, oh, tell us how it's not going to work. Confession, I share your fears. Uh, is there anything you'd like to tell me about it? This is a safe space. Yeah. Because I write notes. <laughs> Do you mind being on recording for us? Right. <laughs> There is no further benefit to be gained from continual conversational intercourse. Assurance, if we are stout in our resolve, we will indeed make theoretical physics history. Well, bitch. All right. Uh, let's hold off on doing that just yet. Yeah. Uh, let's do the annual review, because we're still safe behind our shield, right? Agreed. This one's all you. All right. We're going to channel angsty teen. <laughs> hey, it's the HRO. I, this is about finishing up my annual review. I think maybe we'll want to reschedule. See, I'm kind of don't care, and I'm probably about to get really famous. And uh, if we did the review after, I'm like galactically respected. It'll look better for me, you know. <laughs> Plus, Tool's, like, totally touring right now, and that's so more important. Whatever. <laughs> What's going to happen to make you famous? I can have planned this. Whole test case better if I had planned it. The war fleet, the danger to the ship, the crew's lives, hanging in the balance, it's whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I love that. I'm thinking this may be we're getting the evil person to tell us their plan. Monologue! So sorry I'm not following. Like, spell yes, it all yes. out. Oh, yes. I've, de like, kind of developed a new weapon, I guess, called a hemoglobin bomb. That sounds horrifying. Bomb, bomb. We're working on the name. <laughs> it can be tuned to... Blood chemistry or something of a specific species like these guys I guess and when it goes off it'll like kind of sort of kill them I guess that's kind of nice right whatever sure neat I mean I'll get us out of this mess uh, I'm kind of tempted between one and three uh, it's I might be toward one. Yeah, I'm thinking one. Really, we're probably not going to go this route is my sort of take. Yeah. But. And we want to know why. Like, what's yeah. what's there that he hasn't uh, I mean, told us not commit it. genocide? Yeah. I've not had enough cocktails for that. There's no defense against... <laughs> no, there's no defense against your bomb? Oh, a planet's atmosphere would, like, protect the inhabitants, maybe still working on that like my homework's not done and whatever like Hermalax and shivs would 
probably basically be defenseless, I guess. So that will kill all the Kermulek ships that are around us and we're at risk of capture. But wouldn't that kill... So the, the planet would be safe, but the guy that's trying to get amnesty... Yeah, it or will like kill him. asylum is gonna kill him. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's, let's... I prefer a bloodless solution. What's he waiting for? I'm just kind of curious. I mean, we do prefer the bloodless solution, but he doesn't even know that. That's true. So the first one? Um... Uh... I think maybe, yeah, I think one and three might lead to the same thing, maybe. Okay. So what are you waiting for? I don't know, right? It, I had the whole authority to launch my bomb. This whole crisis would be already over. Have you brought this up with the captain? <sighs> captain won't let me try it. She thinks it's untested, which, I mean, yeah, but and that's dangerous, like, Okay, fine. <laughs> and that it would cause a diplomatic incident? I'm okay, yes, what fine, whatever. She's holding out some magic bullet. Yeah, we are kinda too. Well if the captain won't give you the go ahead to try your bomb. Which is why you need to assign me command of the weapon systems of the duty roster. Is like anyone paying attention to me? Take a minute to think this through. Because at least we're straight up saying no. This one we're kind of leaning heavily towards yes. But we still don't have to do it, right? Uh, it w we will if we assign him, but this is our only way to try to get him to come up with another solution. Or we're just not gonna- I mean, I don't care either way. You pick it. Two, three. Okay. Take a minute to think this through. That's what everyone says. It's a think through. You have a problem, I have a solution. You just have to give me the fucking launch authority. God, adults. Captain would override my assignment. Because then he'll tell us if there's any back doors into the solution. Captain would override my assignment. All I'm saying is that we need 30 seconds to launch. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> and when we have saved everyone, it would be a fite a con I don't know. I dropped out of Fete French. Accompli. No, no, that was on purpose. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Would it be a fiti accompli? I I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I thought you were okay French. <laughs> yeah, as the Norwegians would say. There you go. <laughs> Before we commit to something very very bloody, we should explore all our options. But I like jam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have any other. Have you been listening this whole time? I've been talking. Unless you're talking about a high mind pack pot experiment on quantum thrive idea, but that'll never work. How many off the books for Reggie, sorry. I mean, there's good stuff to know, but uh, we kind of need a solution for this. How can you be this. so sure? Yeah. Let's just see what they got. I mean, it's a nice person thing, I guess, but they're no genius. Not like me. <laughs> To be honest, they are way over their head down there. It's like, they won't be delivering the captain the silver bullet solution she's looking for. <laughs> like, mom, aren't you even listening? <laughs> All I want is a Pepsi, please. She wouldn't give it to me. <laughs> All I want is a Pepsi. Why That's won't Hive Mind's project work? Well, even if the theory was sound, which I'm not conceding, mind you, painfully underfunded over in that lab. If the physics department had more funding, maybe it would come up with all of that sorts of you with gizmos. Right. We don't need another solution. We have my hemoglobin bomb and just in time. Okay, this thing is heavily leaning towards these two are done, done and done. Well, the middle one sounds kind of Still not like... Non-committal? Yeah. Okay. Done party, as the French would say. Just give me 30 seconds. Just trust me for once. Yeah, fuck you. We're not doing that. No. Um... I wonder if we can still interface the defector. Oh, wait. Theoretical physics department budgeted. So we could... Oh, shit. We need to go back, though, and figure out how much work out. We believe... Hold on. 
That was the guy we just talked to, right? Yeah, let's see if he talked about how much time they needed. Painfully underfunded. The physics department had more funding. It probably come up with all sorts of gee whiz gizmos. So it's not giving a specific amount. We'll go back to the other dude and see what... The first person we talked to and see what they said. Because they said they needed a... Oh, wait, which one should you click? Edit or acquisition? Uh, I did a edit. Oh, edit is for the... They needed the 30 seconds. That's why it's time-based. Remember? But that's for the bad option. That's gonna kill everybody. No, no, this is the hive mine 53. That's the first one, the warp drive. Is it really? Yeah. So let's see if he mentioned. No, no, how no, much no, no, no. Go back, go back. Wait, hold on a second. It's saying it's high. It's eating up most of it, right? Just the work Adjust out. the work hours budget for the theoretical physics department to help with their research. No, but he's saying hit the other guy's project is eating up their budget. So he said, "Hey, give us the time we need to do it," or something like that. Um. The cargo. Yeah, they're different. Access a little. Use HRO power to temporary grant command code privileges in the event of an emergency. Okay, so that's to give them access to be able to launch the weapon. Maybe. Well, then what's the other? We still have one more we can talk to, I think. Maybe Interface. We yeah, maybe we. I mean, we already did one, so what's a little bit more? Greetings, little officer. The time for obfuscation. That's a tough word. Is past. <laughs> The entire galactic very... arm is now aware of my intention to defect to your coalition. A very coding word. <laughs> the broadcast made that pretty clear. What they don't know is that I intend to take as many Kermulak command codes and military secrets as possible with me. Assuming you're going to give them to us. That I'm supposed to just take you at your word? One or two. So, yeah. uh, let's prod him a little. Ooh, comfy face. What? Oh, now we're racist. Speciest? Alienist? Xenophobic? <laughs> Xenophobic's probably the easiest one. Probably the most accurate. I mean, oh, I don't even want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Yet we do have a reputation for honor and manners. Unlike some coalition officers, I might point yeah. to. Now just hold on a minute. Like, I have a friend who's an alien. Right? <laughs> My best friend is an alien. <laughs> this conversation has concluded. Good job. <laughs> you have made a powerful enemy today. Hold well, on. shit. Um, yes. So... Requisition is the one if we want to get the physics thing to... Wait, hold on a second though. So it's sort of through... Supplies and... So, okay. One of them is gonna teleport us. And that's his option, but we're not gonna pick up the guy if we do. But I don't think we can pick up the guy now because we kind of just pissed, pissed him, off. him off. So it's like either we get the hell out of here or we kill everybody. Well, let's, let's see what Hivefine said he needed. He needed us to get him something. Cork field calibrate. Okay. I mean, that's probably the better way to go right now. Yeah. Just because I don't feel like we should kill everybody. We'll be able to pay yeah. with the division budget gets reconciled next spring, but at least you'll be alive and to be court-martialed. Committing to this action will also end this act. Are you sure? Oh, okay, so we can either send him what he wants, add to the budget... I mean, or, or let the guy basically blow up every chip. Hold on a second. Go. Can you go to resources? Uh -huh. I think there was something about. Uh, go to regulations. What does it say? He didn't hear about genocide. <laughs> um, I think that was towards the end. To regard the lives now. Committed to travel now. Committed to intercede and localize government now. Only when asked. Treaties now. Vessel shall always practice. Tom was really only version of vegetables. Which communication not established. Um, we kind of already violated that. <laughs> uh, committed a grant, but we kind of fucked that up. Um, worship belonging. But we're not. Are we? In, we're not in civilization space, are we? I think so. Um, for the shift occupation, determine the rest of the space. I'm not like Yeah, it's a little. I mean, I guess we technically could if we are in. Um, that space, but... 
Well, let's try this. If we were to up the hours, let's see if it gives us a warning. Wait, wait, wait. What are you doing this for? What are you doing this for? Because this is going to tell us. Changing a department's budget while long-term projects are in progress can have lasting repercussions. Okay, so... It sounds a little less severe than court-martialing. I mean, is this the thing that's going to get everybody killed? No, no, it's not going to kill everyone. How are you sure about that? Because that one is this. This gives the other guy... The authority, okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure... Um, what did he, did he say that they needed a certain amount of time? No, I checked back through the logs. Well, I think that maybe this is the one that's supposed to be triggered by the guy that we were supposed to talk to. So, I don't know. I think you're kind of, because we don't know what time to put. So. We don't. But this one we know specifically. An and item we know to specifically them. the other one, but that's going to kill everybody. So I would say let's not, I'd rather be court-martialed than murder everybody. That's fair. <laughs> Come in. I'm sorry to disturb your meal period, Lieutenant, but the crisis with the Kermulak defector appears to be coming to a boil. Hivemind53 acknowledged receipt of the quark field calibrator, and energy usage by the physics lab has subsequently jumped 1,067%. They appear almost ready to test the experimental drive. Fire the laser! Oh my god! Report, Hive Mind 53. We need your experimental quark bubble drive online and we need it now. Assessment. Completion of working prototype is imminent. Kermulek fleet is powering up weapons. Sooner would be better, Mr. Hive Mind. <laughs> Assurance. Splicing command circuits now, Captain. Activating do you think the voice acting is really good? It's really good. I know it's not even official stuff, but I do really like it. Um, it worked, Captain. We're now in orbit of Coalition Space Base 11. And Colonel Shuttle? It was brought here with us in the same bubble. Oh. Captain, four Kermulek war destroyers were also swept into the bubble with us. It must have had a larger diameter than Hive Mind projected. Fuck! Shields up! Power weapon systems! Station's defenses are engaging the Kermuleks. Well, at least they're fighting for us. Kicking ass! Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye! Sit rep. Defenses have overwhelmed the Shanghai Kermulax, but the station took massive damage in the fight. We took a torpedo in the Sturm Catering Station. One reported casualty. It's Yeoman Warrington Smythe, Captain. He's dead. Wait, who? Red shirt. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm guessing. But he had a family! Oh, nice! Yay! You made it to the end of episode one. Well, to one of the ends of episode one. Each episode has a number of paths through the story, and your choices can change both the current story and the overall arc of the entire season. We encourage you to play again and see how many different story paths you can discover. We'd love to hear what you think about this first episode and the overall experience. Connect with us on our Discord at support at worthingtonamoncreep.com. That, that is awesome. awesome! Nice! That was fun. Very cool. I, I love the artwork. I'm I'm with you. I'm loving the um the different voices. I think from a, an ADD perspective, that much reading is a little difficult to get through, even though it's funny to go through it. And especially if you know it off the bat that there's multiple different endings, you're more incentivized to try to do a good job by reading through everything. Um I'm kind of excited to play back through it again uh, a little later and seeing like how vastly different uh, the the paths are. What do you think? Yeah. I thought the reading was fine. I think, I mean, every game is going to be different. Yes, and, and think, appeals to a different demographic. Yeah, I think for this, like where it is kind of you have to read between the lines, literally like read between <laughs> the lines and be like, hey, what's happening? You know, try to piece together a little bit of what you're supposed to do. I think it works mm -hmm. fine. It's not... To me, it wasn't overwhelming. I mean, there's like, yeah, you go into the resources and there's a lot of stuff here, but mm -hmm. it was also kind of the challenge, I think, with that. And I don't know. I'm not saying change it for this per se, um, but in this situation, well, I guess we didn't have to take an action really until I'm trying to think. Okay, so I'm trying to think like, did you need to read all the resources before having the conversations with all the characters because you couldn't jump out to read them? I actually, you might not have. Because you might not one, have to, but the game doesn't make that 
expressly clear. Well, and I don't think that's necessary. The thing about it is, like, okay, we obviously picked the bad path for the colonel The one guy, guy. yeah. Um, that's because I couldn't get a read on his personality. Well, and I wonder, I'm kind of working back from that. It's like, okay, yeah. so what were the signs that we didn't pick correctly was, like, a hint before about how being... And I think that hint was there, to be fair, because I was it like... It might have been, and we might have just missed it. he was like... Hey, you know, uh, this basically kind of called this impertinent or whatever. Forgot what exact words are. So that was kind of like you know, be sort of respectful to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe it's just meant to be intuitive. So I'm like it's I possible. said, I'm not critiquing really at all. I'm just kind of working through it in my own head. Um, but I do think the amount of text wasn't that bad. The only time I would say like it might be too much is again if you had to, for example, say you didn't go from the convert like or so, rather sorry. Say you went from the conversation straight into you have to make a choice now and you couldn't right. go back to it, then that would be a lot of text to have to read beforehand and make sure you yeah. remember it all. But the fact that you can go back and reference it... That's very handy. I thought that was that was pretty well done. Agreed. And then, yeah, I mean, graphics are great. The story is kind of great. Like, mm-hmm. it's just... It's cute. It's different. Um, like, I know we were kind of name dropping. Like, oh, it kind of reminds us of like this. It kind of reminds us of like that. But mm-hmm. I mean, let's be fair. It's... 2021 like a lot of things have been done but it doesn't feel at all like it's a copy of anything right it's not like call of duty 10,000 yeah you if know. anything it's just reminding me of games i really like so that's kind of why that's i'm like good. oh yeah There's it's reminds me of black factor. watch i really enjoy black watch so mm-hmm. um but it is definitely got its own flavor to it and agreed I, honestly i thought this was pretty polished I, I i agree for where it is i think it is definitely very polished i will say i was a little confused at the very very onset like how do what what's the first action i should take so reading the key to reading the emails that was a great first start because it got me in the emails i'm like okay good here's information that i need right after that it was a little confusing like okay what's our next step um, but once you kind of, and, and you're not locked into anything, so well, you don't feel like, oh shit, I shouldn't have clicked that button. Yeah. Like, you can come back to it. And we were kind of told, like, oh, hey, this is a person you, you could go talk to, and we just chose not to. So I think when, in this case, it's one of those, and it's not a long playthrough. So no. to kind of fumble through it the first time and be like, oh, okay, now I kind of get the feel of it, mm-hmm. and then... As long as you're able to kind of like, okay, let me re-wipe my episode one to go replay it again now that <laughs> I know what we're doing. I think that's that's totally fine. That's true. So, because um, yeah, at first I was like, oh, we can only pick one and we got to make sure we pick the right one or something. And it's like, oh, actually, no. And as we played on, we're like, oh, we can go we do have, pick all of these yeah, options. It's and, not do or die. Like, oh, too late. You're now dead. Yeah. I am very curious to see how the consequences come through in terms of like, right? oh, you know, we picked this, but we didn't pick this. And I am going to wonder... Not, I'm not trying to influence, but um, <laughs> I am going to wonder if you don't pick any of those choices where, like, say we didn't inter... Oh, what was it? Uh, not the interface one, but the the risk, you know, yeah. the unrecognized channel. Mm-hmm. Would that have consequences on it? Um, That's what Eric says. We definitely want to give you the flexibility and the freedom. I appreciate that because it warns you, like, if you pick... You're now locking into uh, an action. and I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, because now I'm like, okay, cool. So it's kind of telling us, like, it's showing, like, a little bit of the weight of your decision. Yeah. So now we can go back to any of the buttons that are lit up, and I like to have it tell me, okay, what's the weight of this decision? So if I'm not, like, 100% committed, like, okay, I think this is really the solution, I can kind of read into that as to where to go. Except when I totally picked the wrong uh, <laughs> I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you. <laughs> My parents always made fun of us for saying that when we were kids. That's true. I told you. I told you. I told you. you. <laughs> but, yeah. No, I like that. I think it's got the right guardrails in the right place. Because again, yeah. if I, you know, we'd click that and it's like, oh shit, the app's over. It'd be like a, kind of a bit jarring, but it's, mm-hmm. you know, okay. Like maybe we could have explored a little bit more knowing that we weren't going to, I don't want to say be punished, but like, well, we're not it wasn't going to ha- Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But maybe, and that's what I'm saying, though, is, like, well, I wonder if it's going to be, like, in terms of the decision-making, if you choose not to pick those things, mm-hmm. is that going to have an impact? Not the explicit True. actions, but the not implicit what you pick, actions but what you as didn't well. Pick, yeah. yeah, like, we didn't talk to this person, and we missed all that, like, you know, or the thing that we looked at it where, yeah, I don't know. That's just, that's just uh, guessing, but, mm-hmm. yeah, very, very, 
very happy with this. I yeah. like the colors. I like the animations. Oh, yeah. You know. The artwork is really good. The music is great. Like, for being six months out from a release, I think you're in a very, very strong position. Uh, I think, the to Lisa's point, like, the voice actors that you guys got, even for not being professionals, did a decent job. Like, I'm intrigued in the story. Like, oh, shit, I, I want to save, the, uh, you know, like, her son. I also, like, this guy's got uh, codes and stuff like that. That's useful. Like, I want to, I want to try to maximize everything I can scrape out of this. So, yeah, curious to hear what you guys think in chat of what you guys thought of the game. Like, if there's anything that could be, you know, helpful for the, uh, the final release, what you guys liked. Um... This was a lot of fun, and Eric and Mark, thank you guys so, so much Definitely. for letting us play through this. I feel so special. Like, yay, this we got to check fun. it out. Yeah. I've been looking forward thank to you. this game for a while, and I love how drastically different it is from the previous game that's drastically different from the game before that, so you don't feel like, you know, like, oh, 60% of this is similar, like with other games, um, like the Call of Duty 10,000, like, oh, cool, yeah, we're fighting zombies, you know, it's, it's this, it's that, but it's just a different time period. Um, this, you feel like you're truly getting something different. Thanks for having us, this was wonderful. Well, thank you guys, it was so much fun getting to uh, chat with you. So we're not going to do a raid tonight because, again, we want to make sure we can uh, have this... Uh, e video be as useful for as many people as possible for ones who like want to check out the uh, the game in advance we're going to be linking it on steam again please disregard any of the lag in the stream it's not reflective of any kind of lag in the game this is purely on uh steam labs um so i'm glad it didn't lag out in the audio because that would have been really yeah. really awful look at the people as nostalgic because of all the cool math games i did in <laughs> class yeah I, I was getting a little bit of a feel of that. I was remembering, like, the old Math Blasters games, which I <laughs> nerded out on. I loved those. Is that the one where... Oh, wait. Like, you had to answer... Uh, you're trying to shoot things, but in order to shoot, you had to answer, like, 5 plus 2, 7 It's actually... Eight. There's a game that's like that where it's, like, you're you're gooping aliens. Uh -huh. And I actually bought that game on Steam because I used to play it as a kid. No I way! Like <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, oh, that is awesome. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Thank you guys for the likes, the subs, and just for being really cool people and checking this out with us. Again, the link is going to be down in the description below if you'd like to check it out. And if you'd like to help support them, again, they said the best way to be able to do that is uh, any comments on Steam and uh, adding into Wishlist, which I think I'm going to double check to make sure mine is. I think Lisa already did that for hers. Yeah. Math Blasters now is a game I haven't played in age. I know, right? Uh, Shit, we may play that tomorrow if I can get a, a version of it that works. <laughs> Thank you guys so much, and we will see you, Human Resources Directors, in the next stream. Bye, guys! Bye, y'all!